Okay. Welcome to V is for Voting, a presentation by the League of Women Voters in partnership with Brimfield Public Library and Chillicothe Public Library. I'm Catherine Barnett with Chillicothe Public Library, and here is Katie Hahn with Brimfield and Chris Schmidt, who is the Voter Services Committee on the Voter Services Committee and New Voter Outreach for the League of Women Voters of Greater Peoria. So without further ado, thanks so much for being here, Chris, and I'm going to mute myself and take away my video and you can take it from here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I'm really uh, happy to be here and uh, really appreciate uh, the uh, librarians at the Chillicothe and uh, Brimfield Public Libraries helping to set this up. I hope that it's informative. Um, we're going to be talking about voter registration and voting um, and the process in Illinois and in Peoria County in particular, because each state has their own uh, regulations for um, uh, uh, elections and individual counties follow state law, but they also have their own little wrinkles. They do things slightly differently. So what I'm going to be uh, talking about is the process in Peoria County. It's a little bit different in Tazewell County, say across the river or Woodford County. Um, but the basics of uh, voter registration and voting are obviously going to be the same. So in Illinois, there are three, reg three types of voter registration. You can register online. You can register by mail, and you can register in person. We're going to focus uh, a lot on online voter registration because with the pandemic, a lot of the um, in-person voter registration activities um, have been curtailed. Uh, so ordinary, ordinarily, the league goes out to a lot of different places and does uh, in-person registration. We're still doing that this fall, but not to the same extent. Um, so online voter registration, in addition to uh, not having to go outside your home, uh, it's very convenient. If you wanna register online, you would go to this website. It's the um, state website for uh, voter registration. And a couple of things you wanna notice. First, online voter registration closes 15 days before an election. So for this upcoming election, online registration is going to close at midnight on October 18th. Obviously, in addition um, to the deadline, there are also eligibility requirements. To vote in Illinois, you must be a United States citizen. Uh, you have to be 18 years of age on or before the general election. You have to live in your election precinct at least 30 days prior to election day. And you can only vote in one location. Um, now that sounds like uh, it should be obvious, but if you think about it, there are people who live in two different locations at different times of the year. So a college student may be on campus for nine months of the year and then living at their parents, uh, visiting their uh, uh, family home uh, during the holidays. So you can be in two different locations. Where you would register to vote depends on where your legal residence is, so where you pay taxes, etc. cetera. Um, but if you're in the same state, uh, two different locations in Illinois, you really want to register to vote in the place in which you're most familiar with the candidates. So there are local elections in November, as well as uh, state and national elections. And for those local elections, uh, you want to uh, go with the location where you feel the most knowledgeable. Now, uh, the application itself, you just click here. So this is what the website looks like. And when you click here, you get to a page that asks you about your driver's license. Do you have a valid Illinois driver's license or state ID? The reason you're asked about this is 
you really need information from your driver's license in order to be able to register online. So I'm gonna say yes, because I do have a valid Illinois driver's license. And once I do that, I'm gonna find out what information specifically I need. So to register online, I need to have my Illinois driver's license number, the date my license or state ID was issued, the last four digits of my social security number, and my birth date. Now I always remember my birth date. I remember the last four of my social. I have no clue as to when my license was issued, but if I have my driver's license, that doesn't matter. It's on the driver's license. So I can get that information, the number, which I don't have memorized. I just look at my driver's license, uh, get the uh, date my uh, license or ID was issued, and uh, I'm good to go. Now you might wonder, why are you asked for this information? Um, the reason that you're asked for this information is the information you provide is gonna be matched to information that's in the Illinois Secretary of State database. And this is important because remember, you're registering online, there's no place for you to sign. And in Illinois, a signature is really important for the election process. How can you do it online? Well, the Illinois State uh, Secretary of State database has your signature, it's in the database because when you applied for a driver's license or state ID, you had to sign. So um, this information is in the database. You, the information you provide is gonna be matched to that database. And then the election authority will get that information from the Illinois Secretary of State. Now, in addition to being asked for your driver's license information, you're gonna be asked to verify a number of things. The fact that you're a citizen, uh, your age, remember you're gonna provide your birth date, uh, your name, address, uh, email, um, and I'm not gonna walk through that entire process, but basically you'll come up against a series of web pages where you verify information that will be used, uh, that will be sent to the election authority. So remember, you can't register to vote online during the 15 days before an election. So if you want to register online, you want to do it as soon as possible. However, even if you miss that deadline, you can still register to vote. You just can't do it online. Because Illinois has what's called grace period voting. And I'll talk about that more um, after we cover the other ways of uh, registering to vote. Now, in addition to registering to vote online, you can also register to vote by mail. Uh, you can go to an Illinois uh, state website, or you can go to the Peoria County Election Commission website. That's your local election authority in Peoria and download the form. This is the specific uh, uh, link to get to that form. Uh, you click on the link, download, the form, complete the form, and then you mail it directly to the election commission. This is what that form looks like. If you download the form, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner, we've got the instructions for completing the form, place for the uh, return address and address. Notice you do need to put a stamp. The actual application itself is in the lower left-hand corner. And this application is pretty much identical to the, type, the application that you would fill out if you are registering to vote in person. So notice uh, lots of things that you provide and a place for your signature. Now, with the mail-in form, you, are, uh, uh, you would be asked to provide your driver's license number and the last four digits of your social security number uh, on the form. Once your registration form is received and processed, you're mailed a voter identification card. 
Those are little yellow postcards in Peoria. Um, and they're mailed out at the beginning of every month. So if you, uh, they're not mailed out as they're received, they're mailed out in a batch. So if you register to vote online early in October, um, you'll still be registered to vote, but you may not receive your little uh, voter registration, the uh, I registration card uh, before the election, that you're still registered to vote. Um, it's just that you get that uh, card, it has some uh, information uh, on uh, voting on it, uh, but it's not necessary to have the card in order to be able to vote. If you register by mail, remember I said you are going to be asked to supply the last four digits of your social security number and your driver's license or state ID number. But if you don't supply that information, you can go ahead and send the form in, but your, app, your voter's registration won't be complete. Um, what you'll need to do is when you actually go to vote, you're going to need to provide two forms of ID to the election judges. Um, one of the IDs has to have your name and current residential address. Ordinarily, if you're already registered to vote, um, if you've registered online, uh, if you've registered in person, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. It's only when you vote, uh, register to vote by mail and you don't supply the uh, last four digits of the social security number or the driver's license number, then you have to bring in the two forms of ID when you vote. Now, there still is in-person voter registration, um, and that is the third option. How do you do it? Well, you have to provide two forms of identification. You don't have to provide a photo ID, and you don't have to provide a government issue ID. What's critical is that the one of the IDs you provide uh, must include your current name and residence address. So you could use, uh, there are a whole bunch of things that you could use. I'm not gonna go through uh, the list because any list that I gave you wouldn't be complete. Um, uh, the um, election uh, commission, you can give them a call if you're concerned about uh, what types of ID you need to bring. Obviously a driver's license is great. Um, uh, a utility bill that shows where you live because you uh, get email uh, at, uh, your name and address are going to be on the bill. Um, lots of different ways that you can provide um, identification. Now, where can you register to vote in person? You can go to the Peoria County Board of Election Commissioner's office. Uh, so you can always go there. They're open nine to five um, weekdays and uh, there'll be extended hours uh, once early voting starts. In addition to the Election Commission office, you can register to vote at the Peoria County Courthouse. You can register at the City Clerk's office at City Hall. You can register at public libraries. So for instance, you can register at the Chillicothe Library, Alpha Park Library, the Dunlap Library. This isn't an exhaustive list, um, but these are libraries where I know that you definitely can register to vote. Uh, any of the branches of the Peoria Public Libraries um, all of those places you can register to vote in person. And I have to get a little plug in here. Uh, the League of Women Voters is going to have a voter registration table at the Peoria Riverfront Market. Um, that's from 8 a.m. to noon on Saturday. Uh, that will be in September, so September 12th, 19th, and 26th. Um, if you've already registered but you just have questions, um, the ladies at the table will be happy to answer your questions about registration and voting, uh, as well as take uh, your voter registration application. Now, I mentioned deadlines. The last day of regular in-person registration for this upcoming general election is October 6th. Now notice that's different from online registration. So online registration goes until October 18th. If you miss those deadlines, however, you can still register to vote because you can take advantage of what's called grace period registration. 
You can register to vote during the grace period at the election commission office, at any early voting site, or even on election day. So you can you know, say you're completely uh, discombobulated, and but you still want to vote. Uh, you can go to the polls on election day and register to vote. Um, uh, the thing about grace period registration is that if you want to register to vote during the grace period and vote, then you have to vote at the time of registration. So say it's October 19th. Um, you want to go to an early voting site and register to vote. When you register to vote at that time, then you're going to need to vote at the same time. So that's the only difference. With grace period registration, you can register to vote, but you also have to vote at the same time that you register. Now, um, people have been uh, uh, maybe concerned about voter registration records. There's a myth. For instance, uh, that um, voter registration records are used to uh, uh, identify people for jury duty. No, <laughs> um, that's not the way those uh, records are used. Uh, in fact, in Illinois, voter registration records are not public records. Um, and what that means is uh, that the only person who gets to check your voter registration record is somebody who works at the election commission office, obviously they need to be able to do that. And you, um, if you go into the office, you can't see anybody else's voter registration. Uh, you can only check your own uh, registration record. There are a few exceptions for state agencies, um, political parties, uh, registered political parties, but um, in general, businesses, individuals, they can't access the information that's on the voter registration records. It's not um, in the cloud anywhere. Uh, it is uh, in it secure. Um, so uh, for privacy, uh, your records are private. That's not true of every state, but it's true in Illinois. So we finished talking about registration. Um, and of course, the purpose of voter registration is that you want to be able to vote in elections. Now, there have been some changes to the voting process that are specific to the 2020 general election. So the state legislature passed a law making certain changes. Those changes only apply to 2020. And once uh, it's January 2021, all of those changes go away. But for this upcoming election, um, anyone who voted in 2018, 2019, or 2020 in the spring is mailed an application for a vote by mail ballot. Now notice, it's not, they're not mailed a ballot. They're mailed the application for a mail-in ballot. Now, does that mean that you have to vote by mail? No, because there's still gonna be early voting and there's still gonna be uh, the polls will still be open on election day. So it's really um, just an option to make voting by mail easier if that's what you want to do. If you want to vote in person, however, you can still do that. And voting hours for early voting have been extended. Now this is only at permanent early voting sites, which means uh, in Peoria County, that's the election commission office they're gonna have extended hours, 8.30 to 7 p.m. weekdays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekends and holidays. So the, the election commission office is gonna be open uh, for longer hours. Oh, one thing uh, I forgot to mention, election day is a state holiday in 2020. And uh, basically that means state offices and schools will be closed. And one of the nice things about that is that students will be, will not have to attend class on that day, which means they can serve as election judges. Um, uh, really want to encourage um, high school students can apply to serve as election judges, college students can apply to serve as election judges, and the election commission office welcomes your application. They love having 
uh, students uh, work with them. Um, they're tech savvy. They're used to being in a classroom, so they pick up the training really quickly um, and strongly encourage uh, everybody who could to, uh, who's interested to apply, um, but they are really interested in getting students involved in that process. Now, Vote by Mail begins September 24th, 2020. That means the ballots go out. Um, you can submit an application for a mail-in ballot, but you're not gonna get one right away. Um, the ballots, all the candidates have to be identified, all the local issues, the ballots have to be printed up, and um, that process takes time. Um, once the ballots are printed, uh, they will go out uh, generally 30 to 40 days uh, before the election. And uh, for this election, it'll be uh, September 24th. Early voting will also begin September 24th at the Election Commission office. Remember, that's a permanent early voting site. For the other early voting sites, early voting will begin October 19th. Now, different early voting locations will have different dates. Um, so you, you want to check with the Election Commission office or go on the website uh, to find out uh, uh, what the locations are for early voting and what dates uh, early voting will be available at different locations. Always going to be available at the Election Commission office starting September 24th. And of course, the elect election day this year is Tuesday, November 3rd. If you wanna vote on election day, the polls are gonna be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. To find the location of your polling place, you can check your voter registration card, or you can go uh, to peoriaelections.org. That's the website for the election commission, and they have an election schedule page. So you can find out uh, what your precinct is, um, where your polling place is, um, and they update the, uh, uh, the um, website regularly. For early voting, obviously, uh, you can vote in person and you can do it before election day. It's popular uh, with a lot of people uh, because it allows you, um, you can, uh, early voting location may be closer to your home um, now, one thing about early voting, though, is the votes uh, that are cast early are processed, that is, they're put into the system, but they're not actually counted or tabulated until after the polls close on election day, and that is state law. So, um, uh, uh, the, what the election commission does, what any local uh, election authority does, is going to be governed by state law. And what that means really is that there are no early results. The results only occur after the polls close, then the ballots start to be counted and then um, tabulating of the results begins. Um, so your vote will be there, it will be in the office. Don't have to worry about, uh, don't have to worry about it. It's going to be counted. It just won't be counted until after the polls close on election day. And to get the early voting locations, here's the specific link. Now, what do you need to vote early? Well, you don't need to provide a reason or excuse. In Illinois, all you have to do is show up. You also don't need to present a government issued or photo ID to vote. Just as on election day, your identity is verified using a signature match. The signature is what's key for Illinois elections. You might wanna vote in person either on election day or vote early, um, but for the last several years, I have voted by mail because I find it really convenient. I get the ballot in the mail. I have time to look at all the candidates, look up, uh, get information on them, think about it. Um, so I have uh, voted by mail for uh, quite a few years now. Obviously with the pandemic, uh, vote by mail is an attraction, op, uh, an attractive option to many people. Now, this is the application uh, for a vote by mail ballot that I received from the uh, election authority. 
it was sent. Uh, I whited out my name and address. You don't need to know that. Uh, but this is what the application looks like. Um, notice it's a kind of a hot pink card. Um, the election commission uh, makes sure that the um, election mail stands out. And that makes it easier for the people working at the post office to see, oh, this is election mail. We want to treat it uh, uh, appropriately here. Uh, so it kind of serves as notice to uh, postal workers that um, this is election mail. It's important. There's a tracking barcode and a signature is required. So I can request a mail-in ballot. I need to sign my name. I also need to provide my phone number. And if I like, I can provide an email address. Um, now, the phone number and email address, ordinarily, I don't give those out to people, but I'm happy to give it to the election commission because remember, voter registration records are private. They're not gonna sell my information to telemarketers. Um, the only reason they want the information is that if there's any problem, they wanna be able to get in touch with me as soon as possible. And they can get in touch with me through the mail, they have my address, but a phone call or an email is going to be a lot quicker. And if I were not going to be at home, uh, this year I will be at home, uh, but if I were going to be traveling or traveling for work, um, I would provide my mailing address and they would mail the ballot to that address. So for instance, uh, for college student, uh, the mailing address might be their address on campus. Now, first time voters aren't gonna see that pink card. Um, they're not gonna automatically get an application to vote because they've never voted before, but they can still apply for a mail-in ballot and you can do it online. Um, this is the specific link for doing that. And uh, for instance, uh, you wanna make sure that you provide your mailing address if it's going to be different from your residential address so they can send the ballot there. And the election commission office has done a lot better job than I have of describing the Did process. Did you know that voting at home is open to all voters in Peoria County? It is safe, accurate, convenient, and easy. To request your ballot, visit www.peoriaelections.org and complete the online application. The application process begins 90 days prior to the election and ends five days before. Once the election office receives and processes your application, a vote by mail packet will be sent to you starting 40 days before the election. Inside the packet, you will find your ballot, secrecy envelope, and a purple return envelope. Be sure to read all instructions located on the back of the packet. To vote your ballot, use a blue or black ink pen and fill in the box next to your choice. Be sure to only select the number of choices available for each race. If you don't want to vote for a race, skip it. The races you do choose to vote will still be counted. If for some reason you foil your ballot, you can either call the election office to have a replacement ballot mailed to you or take your spoiled ballot to your polling place on election day and cast your vote in person. Once you have completed voting your ballot, fold and seal inside the secrecy envelope. Place the secrecy envelope inside the purple envelope and sign the affidavit located on the back. No postage necessary. Just drop in the nearest mailbox for return to the election office. Now, I'm stopping it here because there are some other things that you wanna fill in. In addition to signing your name, which is absolutely critical, um, it's a good idea to date. Uh, so sign and date it. And then um, as I mentioned before, if you provide your phone and email, if there's any problem with your ballot, the election office can get in touch with you. Uh, because people worry about their ballots being rejected. Um, that's, it's, if there's a problem with the ballot, it doesn't get tossed. <laughs> what happens is someone from the election commission office will try to get in touch with you and remedy uh, the situation. So the easier you make that uh, 
pos uh, possible, uh, the better it is for everybody. Ballots must be posted no later than election day to be counted. All returned vote by mail ballots are verified by a bipartisan team of election judges before being counted. Take advantage of our vote by mail program. It is safe, accurate, convenient, and easy. And you can, with a vote by mail ballot, you can put it in a mailbox or for this uh, election, there are ballot drop boxes. The large drop box is, uh, has just been uh, put into place outside the Peoria Election Commission office. So um, it's not open yet because remember the vote by no ballots haven't uh, gone out yet. Um, but, uh, and um, uh, but that is another location where if you want to just drop off your ballot, you can drop it into the drop box instead of putting it in the mail. The choice is up to you. The smaller drop boxes, you notice, those are going to be at uh, the early voting locations. So you can, if you want to use a drop box, you can go to the election commission office, put it in the drop box outside the office, or you can go to an early, any of the early voting locations and uh, drop your ballot off in the smaller drop boxes that are gonna be at those locations. So um, in addition to using the mail, if you're a little bit concerned about that, there has been a lot of uh, press. Um, the election commission office, uh, they have worked with our local post office uh, for quite a while. Um, so they feel pretty confident that uh, ballots will be uh, coming in if they're mailed in. Um, but uh, another way of doing it is to use the Dropbox. And in terms of security, uh, the Dropbox has uh, been, um, uh, it's in cement. Uh, currently they uh, put that in. Um, it has electronic locks. There uh, are a number of security precautions that I'm not gonna mention, uh, but they're very ingenious. Uh, video camera is gonna be on it uh, 24 hours a day. It's alarmed and I believe those alarms are directly to the um, local uh, police. So um, a very secure way of uh, uh, turning in your ballot. Now, uh, there have been a number of uh, issues about mail-in voting that have uh, come up. Um, the uh, best evidence so far shows that really mail-in voting is just useful for everybody. It doesn't benefit one party over another. Um, there's absolutely no evidence uh, that mail-in voting produces more fraudulent voting. Um, there are a number of states that only use mail-in ballots, uh, Utah, um, Washington, Oregon, uh, the Western states, um, and they have done studies to see, you know, what is, what is the incidence of people who are trying to commit fraud? Um, it's ex minuscule, it's extremely rare. Um, in Illinois, we have a number of procedures uh, to maintain the security of mail-in voting. And the most important one is the uh, election judges who check the signatures and monitor for fraud. Did you know that every mail ballot is verified through signature matching? Did you know it is your signature that makes your vote count? Your signature is verified by a bipartisan team of trained election judges. If an issue with your signature is identified, then the election judges review additional signature images from your voting record. If your signature still doesn't pass the verification process, then you will get a letter in the mail giving you up to 14 days after the election to resolve the issue and make sure your vote is counted. The signature verification process happens without your ballot envelope ever being opened to ensure your vote remains anonymous. Now don't forget to sign the back of your ballot envelope. Remember, it's your signature that makes your vote count. The ballots are tracked. So when a mail-in ballot goes out, um, the uh, uh, 
there's a barcode on it that enables uh, the uh, election commission to track it and know uh, when it uh, goes back and when it's received. Postage in Peoria County, not every county, but uh, in Peoria County, uh, mail-in ballots have prepaid postage. At the same time, the post office knows um, that there have been communications between the election commission and the local post office, and they know that though that mail is supposed to be postmarked. Um, so uh, it should be postmarked. If it's not postmarked, remember, you have the opportunity to date your ballot, and that's one of the reasons why you want to do that. Well, there are the um, secure ballot drop boxes. Um, so a lot of security procedures in place. One of the nice things that's going to happen in uh, this election is that if you want to track your ballot and know uh, whether a mail-in ballot has been sent out to you, uh, when you've sent it back in, if you want to know whether it's been received, you're going to be able to do that. Um, it's not online just yet, but within the next week or so, on the Peoria Election Commission website, they're gonna have a, a place where you can uh, track your ballot. Um, and that uh, should be able to give people peace of mind to know that the ballot that they mailed in or that they put in the Dropbox has been received by the Election Commission office. Now, uh, some changes to the election process due to COVID-19. Um, there's gonna be a number of things that may occur, may, we don't know uh, exactly what's gonna happen, but keep in mind on election day, there may be longer wait times. Uh, people uh, are gonna need to socially distance um, and the uh, voting equipment is gonna need to be clean and those additional precautions may make the uh, waiting times longer on election day. And for this reason, uh, people, and also just to reduce the risk of going out in public, people may wanna vote early where there's not, uh, usually it's not as crowded um, or by mail. Um, so those options are there uh, uh, and people can take advantage of them if they're concerned about longer wait times. Remember, election day is a state holiday so um, uh, that may uh, help some individuals in terms of um, having more time to vote. Uh, but uh, the Election Commission Office has uh, kind of uh, working, working hard uh, to make sure that um, voting is as easy as possible for people, given the really historic uh, circumstances of voting in a pandemic. Now, remember, uh, as you just saw, signatures have to be verified by election judges for mail-in votes. And mail-in ballots that are postmarked on or before election day uh, must be counted even if they're received after election day. So if it's got a postmark that says it was mailed November 2nd, the election office may not get it until November 4th, but they still it's still a valid ballot and it will still be counted. Um, and those processes take time. Um, so if there are a lot of mail-in ballots, um, then it may take longer to process uh, those ballots. What you want to do, uh, just to make things easier for everybody, is basically you're going to be voting by mail. As soon as you get your ballot and you know who you've decided who you're going to vote for, don't wait. <laughs> just complete your ballot and put it in the mail or put it in the Dropbox. Um, it will be processed. That is, the signatures will be verified um, and it will be ready to go. Um, but if it comes in, uh, if it comes in uh, the day before the election or on election day, then it's gonna. It may take longer to process those ballots. Um, so you can make things easier by, um, uh, if you're voting by mail, just doing it as early as you possibly can. If uh, there are a huge number of mail-in ballots and the processing takes a long time, it may not be possible to project 
the winners of the races on election night. But one of the things that I didn't really, I didn't know, um, I learned is that the results that are provided on election night are always a projection. They're never, they have never been the official result. Uh, by law in Illinois, election results aren't official until 14 days after the election. So all of the earlier times that I voted and found out the winner on election night, well, that was a projected winner. If 99% of the votes are in, then the 1% of votes uh, that still needs to be processed is probably not going to make a huge change. But it's always been a projection. It's never been the official result. And so it's not really a problem if we don't know. Uh, it's annoying. I would love to know, uh, you know, we want to know as soon as possible what the results of the election are. But by law, the, the results aren't going to be official until 14 days after the election anyway. And that should be enough time uh, in Peoria for the uh, uh, ballots to be processed and counted. Now, final note on voting. If your eligibility to vote is questioned on election day, you may vote a provisional ballot. Um, and that ballot will be processed and counted if you're found eligible to vote. What could be a circumstance? Well, say you downloaded the form of, uh, and sent your voter registration in by mail. You didn't provide your social security number, the last four digits, uh, last four digits of your social or your driver's license number and you forgot your ID when you went to the polling place, you can still vote. You will cast a provisional ballot. And what will happen then is within the um, 14 days, you're going to need to come back to the election office with your ID to show them that, uh, uh, to complete that final step. Um, so uh, uh, you can, uh, if you, uh, if something come, comes up and your vote is, uh, questioned in any way, you can always vote a provisional ballot. And the election commission office would like you to consider to serve as an election judge. So I'll play your ad. Across this great community, men and women from every background and occupation are coming together to help the citizens of Peoria County. They are election judges. They assist voters on election day by distributing ballots, answering questions, and opening and closing the polls. They do it not for the $155 paycheck, but to help others and to give back to this great community. Become a part of this elite team. Become a part of history. Become an election judge. And I hope you uh, consider serving as an election judge. Um, let me just say one thing. Um, in the little video, it says $155. I believe it's $165. So a $10 raise <laughs> for this year. I don't know if it's just for this year or what, um, but the number that I've heard at the election commission office is $165. Um, they will need uh, about 500 uh, election judges. Oh, that's a lot. Um, and they are pretty happy that they, they have been getting applications, um, but they haven't quite reached uh, their goal yet. Um, so do hope that uh, uh, if you can do it, um, you consider serving as an election judge. And of course, the question then is, you've learned about voter registration, um, voting, um, how do you get information about the candidates? Uh, there are a number of ways to do this. So I can't give you information about um, uh, all the different ways. Um, I suggest uh, you check the um, League of Women Voters has a Facebook page, the Peoria League, and we will be having some candidate forums. They're going to be virtual events, but they're going to be streamed live on Facebook. Um, those are coming up. I know there are other groups that are going to be doing um, candidate forums. I don't have any specific information on those to give you. Um, one of the things for me is uh, that I've um, uh, always had uh, uh, the most trouble with is getting information about 
local candidates. No problem getting information about national uh, races or uh, state, uh, the statewide races, but uh, local candidates, um, the league uh, voter forums are really good for that. And this year, uh, the league also has the Illinois Voters Guide. What we did was um, uh, in Peoria, we sent out a list of questions to the local candidates um, and asked them for their answers. They may or may not provide that information, but if they do, um, it will go into the Illinois Voters Guide. And this is the link. And when you click on that link, you will get this screen. Um, you won't need to worry about registering to vote or checking your voter registration status or applying to vote by mail. But if you wanna know what's on your ballot, um, that is uh, what you should click. So that's gonna be available after September 16th. We're still um, waiting to get the information back from the candidates. And again, remember the candidate forums, uh, the uh, league uh, Facebook page um, will have information on those. And of course, you can get a lot more information on, uh, you can call the office, uh, but as you might uh, expect, they're gonna be pretty busy. Um, the website uh, for the election commission is really well designed. Um, and you go to that uh, website, you can get a lot of information if you're interested in applying to become an election judge, that's where you wanna go. You wanna go to the election commission website. If you wanna track your ballot, you wanna go to the election commission website. Um, so lots of good information there. And I think at this point, I'll turn it back over to Catherine. Um, hey there. There we go. All right, so we don't have questions from the public at the moment. Um, if anyone is listening, please do feel free to drop those questions in the comments section. Um, but I did have a couple questions that occurred to me that may have occurred to other people too. Um, can you early vote at any early voting location, even if it's not maybe one that's near where you normally vote? Um, that I do not know. Um, I, uh, a quick, a kind of an easy way to get information, to, to get an answer to a question like that, you can call the election commission office, but um, as I said, they're they're probably pretty busy. A way to do that, that would a way to ask that question. I know they have a Facebook page, and I know that if you ask them questions through the Facebook page, they they get back to you. So they do answer, and and that then is a public question and answer. Um, so uh, I don't I can't really answer your question. One of the other league members probably would be able to answer it. It's just, um, uh, it's, uh, um, uh, it's. I thought of lots of, you know, I asked a lot of different questions of the election commission. Um, are homeless people able to register? But I didn't ask that one, so I, I'm afraid I don't. I don't know the answer to that. But I know that you can get uh, that information, um, and I, you could do that tonight, probably just by going to their. Facebook page, you might get an answer by uh, tomorrow, or you can call, you can call the office. They are uh, answering the phones. Um, uh, and I, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't get the information that, uh, that would enable me to answer your question. No worries, no worries, <laughs> I know everything. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another question, you mentioned that um, mail-in ballots have to be submitted by um, election day. Does that deadline, postmarked. sorry, postmarked, postmarked. By. Yeah, postmarked by then, does that yeah. apply as well to um, mail-in ballots that are put into one of the drop boxes that are available? No, no obviously those aren't going to be postmarked because those aren't going to the post office. Sure. If you put your ballot in the drop box, they're going to be emptying the drop box, uh, drop box once a day. Okay, so just so, you can uh, drop it in the drop box anytime before 
election day and it should be good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And remember, um, if you put the, your date uh, on the um, envelope, then that, that is information that the election commission office uses. Okay. So if the drop box is open, it's probably fine to put your ballot in because they, they can close the drop box and, and it won't be able to accept any more ballots. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I actually had someone ask that question of me today. So um, that gives me an answer to pass on to her. Yeah, yeah. You don't, it won't be postmarked because it's not going through the post office. But sure. um, uh, they'll be uh, they'll be checking it at least once a day, and um, so yeah. And re um, remember too, you have the tracking option. So um, uh, say uh, say you've got um, uh, you put your uh, ballot in the drop box, and you wonder did they get it? Uh, it's gonna you'll you'll be able to track that on the on their website on the election commission website. Of course, the whole, uh, but I do want to reiterate, the sooner people do this, the better. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, kind of, if you want to wait until the last minute, then you might as well vote on election day. Um, uh, so you really, uh, it, with vote by mail, um, early voting, just do it. And um, uh, like my sister says, she says, I'm going to vote early. And then I'm not going to look at the news until the end of November, you know, until Thanksgiving. Um, so uh, you can, uh, the sooner you do uh, do things, the better. It just makes it easier for everyone, including yourself. You won't have to worry. Great. Thank you. Oops, I just realized I mistyped the league's uh, website in comments here. So here's the actual website. <laughs> All right. Katie, did you want to chime in with anything? Any questions or comments from your end? Uh, no, you asked good questions. <laughs> there were a lot, there was lots of good information. Thank you. And I can I can actually check with the um, election commission and find out about the uh, early voting. Um, they may have that information on their website as well about you know with early voting and where you know who gets to go where for early voting i i don't know um uh i don't know what the rules on that are i know that you can go to the election commission office um so uh that, and that's located you know so you don't have to like live close to the election commission office to go uh, vote early. I just, I'm just not as familiar with the early voting process as I am with mail and balloting and uh, the um, election day voting. All right. Yeah, I don't think that the website really was clear on that. So mm. my, my assumption was you could go to any of them, but maybe that's just because there wasn't more details. But anyway, yeah, do you have any other final thoughts, uh, Chris, before we close out the, the event tonight? Um, no, I just, uh, uh, like I said, the, uh, the, fa the election commission has a Facebook page and that's really a good source of information as well as their website. It's a different form, um, of information. I know they do take questions on the Facebook page. Um, the Peoria, um, the, uh, League um, web uh, Facebook page. League has a web page, obviously, um, but the Facebook page is really uh, a good place to find out um, uh, about the events that the league has scheduled, and in particular the candidate forums. That uh, is going to be um, helpful to people, I think. Um, and those will be streamed live on Facebook. People can type in their questions um, while the uh, candidates are talking. Um, I think there is going to be a question and answer panel. Uh, the executive director of the election commission. Not sure about the date of that, but I think that event is going to be on the um, election commission website. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of information out there. A lot of things going on. Most, a lot of it's virtual. Uh, Ordinarily, we do a lot of stuff in person, and 
Um, unfortunately, we just haven't been able to do that as much. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, I just encourage people to um, uh, follow those, you know, Facebook pages and um, get the notifications of different events and stuff. Uh, if uh, um, it's just a way to um, stay informed. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share this information with us tonight. And yes, thank you. Oh, well, thank you guys. This is, I uh, really, uh, like I said, we had stuff, outreach stuff planned and it just went kablooey with the pandemic. So I just really appreciate uh, having public libraries <laughs> more now than ever, because uh, you guys are kind of like information central and you do a lot of uh, good things apart in addition, in addition to all the books. So um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, very happy to take advantage of you. Well, thank you. That is what we are here for. So, <laughs> and we'll be a recording um, or sharing the, the Facebook live recording. Um, and um, so people can access it that way. And, and then I will send you the PDF uh, PDF file with the slides. If uh, people are interested in that, they can download it. It's all, it, most of it is just information I took off of the Peoria Election Commission website. Uh, there's a few other things, but uh, um, there's, uh, we're very fortunate. We, there's a lot of information out there. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. We will go ahead and wrap things up. Okay. Thanks Have a good a night. I'm gonna, yes, I'm going to say good night.